What's up guys, my name is Liam and today we're going to be taking a first impressions look at the Endgame Gear OP1 W4K. If you've had any experience with the OP1 8K, you're going to have a really good general understanding of how this mouse feels, minus the cord, but since it is wireless, it does add some additional weight. This is featuring the same top of the line performance as the XM2 W4K that I just recently reviewed in my channel. So hopefully I'll be able to help you decide whether or not this could be the perfect gaming mouse for you. Let's check it out. And before we get started today, I did want to let you know this was sent out to me. However, everything you're going to be hearing in this video is going to be my own words and my own opinions. Included inside the box, it does have a USB-C to a USB Type-A cable. It does come with some additional skates. These are the larger 99.5% PTFE skates. It does come with a couple of user manuals, these side grips, and a screwdriver to assist in opening up the mouse if you need to do so. And here's a close-up look of the 4K wireless receiver that does come included with the mouse. It just has their logo here on the front. It is this triangular shape. There is no LED indicator. Here's a look of the back with the USB-C connection. And then it does have a rubberized bottom. This mouse is going to be available in four different colors. They're going to have it in white, black, and then the transparent white and the transparent black. As far as I know, it is not going to become available in this purple frost colorway. This is just the top shell from the OP18K. k So clearly it is something you can do. You can swap over your top shell from your OP18K k onto this OP1 4K. You just cannot change the base. And as you can see, the original color of this mouse that I did get was actually black. So it's pretty much the same design for the internals here, where you do have these switches screwed in to the top shell right here. And all you really need to do is just undo these bottom screws right here to open it up. You'll unplug these plugs, make sure obviously that you have them in the correct slots and then you can just swap it over. It fits on here seamlessly. But coming over to the bottom, it's going to have the same look as the original OP1 at WE, where you do have your power button over here. Turn it on or off. This is your DPI button. And as far as I know, it is the same skate design. It does come with the 99.5% PTFE skates. You still can buy these 100% uh, virgin PTFE skates, but you have to purchase those separately, obviously. With the build quality on both shells, and I do want to be clear, I didn't swap out this shell due to any type of build quality issues or anything like that. As a matter of fact, I will bring up one point that I kind of feel like I noticed here really quick. When it comes to these transparent shells, even though we're talking about a pretty small difference here, I feel like these transparent shells have a little bit more flex to them, whereas these solid shells, they just feel a little bit more stiff. Anyways, that has been my experience with these. And again, this is just a really small minor difference. So clearly both of these have the same very grippy end game gear coating on them. And the shell integrity on all my end game gear mice, I've been very lucky. I haven't had any issues with any type of flex or anything so far. As far as the switches go, this is using possibly my favorite mechanical switches, the Kel GX switches. They're very lightweight and I get just a very minimal amount of pre-travel, hardly any very minimal post travel as well you do get a little bit more play if you do come up here in the front and you can make contact with the shell but the click implementation on these mice i do feel like is really great might just get slightly a little bit heavier in here in the back but not too much and being really rough there i'm not getting any type of left to right or hardly any teetering or anything like that so everything about the build on this feels pretty standard you also do get that stiffer feeling scroll wheel on the steps and the click on it, not that heavy, but it is tensioned nicely. And same thing goes for the side buttons over here. You do get a little bit play back here in the rear, but it seems to go away here in the middle. You get almost no pre-travel and it does get a little bit tighter up here in the front. Post travel on this is really solid. I get to a very minimal, almost no rocking back and forth on the rear side button and everything feels really solid up here on this front side button. And just to demonstrate with you guys here really quickly with this top shell, since the switches are in here, exact same thing, no major play, little bit of play back here on the rear side button, gets stiffer in the middle, almost no rocking back or forth, and the post travel on all these 
feels really good. The one thing about this black copy is you can see it does get some fingerprints on it, whereas these transparent shells and even the white copy, you don't notice the fingerprints that much. So if that's something that bothers you, something to take into con consideration to get a different copy other than black. With the clicks, if you are having any type of issue with them feeling too stiff, or perhaps having a little bit too much pre-travel or something like that, you can slightly unscrew the top screw right here if they feel a little too stiff to make them feel like they have just a little bit more play there and vice versa you can tighten them up to make them a little bit more stiff so that's just something to keep in mind when it comes to the click quality on mouse one and two so let's go ahead and i'll drop a click quality sound test When it comes to the weight and balance, I do believe this has a 335 milliamp hour battery in there. Um, if that's not exact, I believe it is something close. Everything about the balance of this has felt fantastic. So with the battery in it dropping on my scale, looks like we got it at about 58.9 grams. And I've already gone over the software a couple of times, but I will run through it again for you guys here really quickly. On this first page, it does allow you to adjust the liftoff distance and your CPI. Next up on this advanced tab is where it does allow you to turn on or off motion sync, adjust your pulling rate, and you can enable or disable the slam click filter and the motion jitter filter here. I do recommend leaving the slam click filter and motion jitter filter on to make sure that this mouse is running and performing as stable as possible everything about the setting and performance of this mouse was configured with these being left on and down here for this multi-click filter i just recommend leaving this at the standard eight setting adjusting this is not going to change the click latency on this mouse at all if you were to reduce this amount it will make it more likely that you'll get double clicks i do however recommend coming over here to this spdt option and enabling the GX speed mode, as this will further reduce the click latency of the mouse. When you do enable the GX speed mode, it is going to disable the functionality of the multi-click filter anyways. But if you do mess around with this GX speed mode and find that you don't like it, even if you have it off, the click latency on this mouse is still insanely fast. Then finally over on the next tab, you do have this button mapping function. The next tab you have your power settings where you can enable the sleep functions for the mouse. And then the final tab is for pairing a dongle. As I mentioned in the intro, this is using the same performance driver as the XM2W4K. Just something to keep in mind, you're gonna get the same click latency across all the pulling rates, the 1K, 2K, and the 4K. And this testing is done without the GX speed mode off. The XLAT system is not currently compatible working with the GX speed mode enabled. All right guys, so that about wraps things up on the OP1W4K. I did a first initial impression on the XM2W4K. I have been using this mouse religiously ever since I've gotten it. Everything still feels fantastic for me as far as the coding, the build quality. I haven't come across any changes or any different experiences from my first one. The build design between both these is a little bit different um, where the OP1 does have the interchangeable switch function and the XM2W4K does not. The switches are actually soldered inside of the PCB itself. Like I've already said in the intro, if you've had any experience with these game gear mice in the past especially considering the fact you can just swap over your shell from the op1 8k onto this mouse then clearly you're going to have a very good understanding of how these feel in the hands but so far i've been really enjoying using these mice as in my opinion M game gear has just some of the best feeling mice in general as far as the clicks the wireless performance build quality and coding goes so if you guys have any additional questions or feel like i left anything out please let me know in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed watching this video and are interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, please drop this video a like and subscribe to my channel. And thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.